Hey everyone, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast. Tonight we're talking to the Sons of Hiram Motorcycle Riding Club in the state of Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our opinions and thoughts are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions, either here on YouTube or on our Facebook page. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up and especially any comments on our videos. Colbeth, one of your hosts. I'm joined with Steve Chung out of Vancouver. I'm uh, sorry, no, you're not in Vancouver. You're in the Kelowna. Kelowna. Uh, <laughs> and then also our other host, Matt Apple, up in District 2, North Seattle. Uh, our guests tonight are Glenn Butler and Matt Runyon, both worshipful masters, past masters. Technically, Glenn's still in office, actually, but he's considered a past master. I thought we'd never get him into the master seat, but uh, I was able to install him, so he's there officially. <laughs> so anyway, tonight we're talking to them about the Sons of Hiram. It's a local motorcycle riding club. Uh, it's a Masonic motorcycle riding club. You can see the logo kind of behind the guys right now, the Sons of Hiram. And so I know Glenn was a founding member. Matt, are you a founding member as well? I am not. You're not, okay. You're just, you're just a longtime member running the yes. running stuff. Yep. So, Glenn, uh, tell us kind of uh, about the club, how it started, wherever you want to go with the story. We'll pick it up from there. Well, the, the, the club started uh, back in about 2009. Uh, Worshipful brother Tony Holloway and myself and uh, Worshipful brother uh, Court. Uh, Barry and Court Fraley and Mike Rankin. And uh, Mike Rankin were sitting around talking. And we were all members of the uh, Freemason Writing Club out of Tennessee. So we kept mailing all this money back to the back to the, the grand chapter there for our chapter up here. And we thought, well, why are we doing that? Why don't we just make a local club where all of our funds go to the local residents? And if we ever have a chapters, all of their dues, everything goes to their local chapters, and we don't we don't make any money off the chapters that way. It just made more sense to us. So. We sat down, we designed a logo, we petitioned the Grand Lodge, and we're rejected. Uh, the, the most worshipful said that there were enough uh, more Masonic clubs out there that we really didn't need anymore. And uh, so I, I wrote a letter back to him, uh, explaining my disappointment and the the reason that we were we were there, and the reason we wanted to have be a one patch club versus a three patch club like the Widow Sons or um, some of the other clubs out there and he didn't realize that there was a kind of a hierarchy in in motorcycles in the motorcycle community where a one patch is more of your social club city club where their focus is charity uh giving back to the community where uh, three patch clubs generally are reserved for more your mcs and uh your outlaw banker clubs so for us even though uh, we were just a writing club, we wanted to be the social club. And growing up with the Hells Angels going across the street, I had a really hard time putting three patches on my back. So like the Widow Sons, they have the three patches there. And to me, that would just gave a better, better look to the community. Plus, we wanted to have that square and compass on there to show the world that, hey, we're Masons. So he understood that a little bit more about it and approved us. So we're the only... Only chapter or only by more cycle writing club in Washington State that's approved to have the square and compass as part of our logo, as the main part of our logo. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, so once we got our approval letter, then we had to write our bylaws, which our bylaws go back to all of our, we, we donate to the youth, the youth groups. We donate to uh, charities like Children's Hospital, 
Um, one of our big founder, our big donations we do is to Mom and Me, which just changed to Saint. They just changed their name. Saint John's. Thank you. Um, Saint John's Mobile Clinics. Um, we also do a lot of donations to to some of the lodges. That, for example, over in uh, the Goldendale, they were painting their their lodge and they need a little bit of extra funds, so. Our club kicked out some money over to them, help them paint, uh, buy the paint for their lodge. So we, but we, our main focus has always been the, the youth groups and helping them out. Um, we took, took on the uh, Super Ladies this year as one of our charities. So we, they, what they do is they go out and to the first responders and, and help serve food to the first responders on fire department or police, department, police officers, things like that. Uh, Kind of helps just help give back to the community. And with we also donate to the uh, we also donate to the Grand Master every year as well. Yes, we do, and uh, the Grand Master Cherry. So typically, we donate. We set it. We vote every year for what this what the set amount is. But normally, it's about five hundred dollars towards the the Grand Master Cherry. Um, and then on our flight as well, we that's one of our our uh, favorite donations as well. Awesome. I, I know the soup ladies were featured on the Mike Rowe episode, uh, national national broadcast, and that was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, there was actually a couple, of masons, a couple of masons. A couple of masons on that show. Right? A supporter patch on my on my vest. Yeah. Okay, so fair to say that you need to be a uh, at least an entered apprentice to petition to join. Uh, actually, Iron you have Sun to be a master mason. Pardon. Beams that our, our, our logo has the Master Mason uh, squaring compass on it. And we ask that our, our inner, in here in Washington State, and we do ask that our, you, you only wear your squaring compass as a Master Mason. So we don't really like to have our, our inner apprentice or our fellow crafts wear the, the squaring compass until they become a Master Mason. All right. But once you're a Master Mason, you can uh, petition to uh, join yeah. the Sons of Hiram? Yep, and uh, we we like to we we keep it we keep our club a little bit small. Um, one reason is when we're out there riding, we we ride like riding a group. We we require at least two rides with somebody to make sure that they're safe. They're not gonna cause an accident, things like that. Um, so keeping our 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 chapters smaller seem to uh, keep a lot of the conflicts and the uh, the egos down quite a bit. You say uh, uh, keep the numbers down. So what kind of numbers do you have in membership in, in a um, so chapter? 52 members in our club. Uh, Grand Chapter has about, say, what are we have about, I believe we're at 40, 40 ish? Around 40, yeah, 40. And then um, the rest is spread between Acacia Chapter and Freebird Chapter. And where are they located? Uh, Freebird Chapter is over in Spokane. And Acacia Chapter is over in Squim. Where is that? <laughs> Squim. <laughs> That's a good Indian name. Squim. Yeah. Squim. It look. It looks like Sequim, but it's yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's Squim. It's the. They call it the. Uh, what is it? The the sunny Seattle. Uh, it's it's in a rain cloud area, so a lot of people retire over to Seattle, over to Squim. Banana Belt. There's not, not very much. Right. Banana Belt. That's it, Matt. It's just across the water. Okay, and right, Hood Canal area, right? Yeah, there you go. And so it's you got Angeles. So you mentioned the different groups. So you guys run like much like a lodge does. You have a, a hierarchy in the lodge and chairs and all that. Yeah, yeah we do. I'm 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 the president of the chap of the of the of the grand chapter. Matt's the vice president of the grand chapter. Uh, we have two sergeant at arms and two road captains, plus a secretary and a treasurer. Cool. And um, how often do you guys meet as for like a, an official that you guys meet? You know, well, like we, we try to meet every month, just even if it's just for coffee. Um, our official meetings are quarterly. Uh, most of us have grandkids or kids or, or work that keeps us from meeting every single weekend or, or doing things like that. So our, our official meetings are, are uh, quarterly. Except, except but, in October. Except for October, right. we do the haunted forest of Maple Valley all all month long. 
<laughs> yeah, that's our that's our main fundraiser. So we work that every Friday and Saturday night in October, and that's where we get uh, all the money to support the youth groups. Very cool. Very cool. But our, our our normal meetings, like we have the like you said, quarterly. But we do put it in the calendar for the second Saturday every month to at least go out and have coffee. And if the weather's nice and we get enough people, we'll go for a ride. But we like to meet up at least once a month just to you know chat. Right. Well, that's excellent. Uh, well, you know, that's the social aspect, right? Yep. That yeah, is social aspect. Um, and then plus with, with you get a group of masons together, you get a group of masons together talking about motorcycles, then somebody comes up and asks about it, and next thing you know, you have a, a person petitioning the lodge. So, right. uh, Worshipful Brother uh, Mike Rankin, he was he, he joined because of the, the motorcycle club. Um, and now he's working his way up, and he'll be, he'll be in Grand Line someday. And how long has David been a member? How long have you been a member? Three years? Uh, it's been about three years. I think I finally got the motorcycle again about three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I'd had one in the past and then uh, hadn't had one with the girls for a long time. And uh, I don't ride as much as I should. I know these guys would shame me to death if they could. But I'll <laughs> tell you, when when I first was petitioning to the to the club and met them for breakfast, I thought this is this is exactly what lodge culture should be like. They just they didn't really you know most of them didn't know me, but they they welcomed me with open arms and they were having a good time talking and enjoying themselves and enjoying each other and they shook hands and hey good to see you and and they just brought me right in and that was to me I thought gosh if we could bottle this feeling that you have in the riding club and take that to lodges to the social nights and other things the camaraderie and the unit, you know, and so I, now I understand why the, the affinity lodges, they call them in England and in Europe are so popular because everybody has a common thread and a common theme. Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> as I was saying before we started the recording, we'd often thought of, uh, trying to do, you know, start a club here. And, um, we've been told many times that not going to happen in BC until uh, a certain past master or a certain past grand master passes away. So we're waiting. But was, there, was there an issue in the past or what happened? You know, no, they just doesn't, doesn't believe that it should exist. Uh, um, whether it be the sons of a Hiram or whether it be any motorcycle riding group. Right. So all of us, we just get together and we go out and we ride. Right. And then um, last year, again, we, we tossed around the idea or was it yeah, a year, year and a half ago, uh, we tossed around the idea after I joined you guys' Facebook page. We got talking about it. And then it was almost like, well, this is a lot of work, right? And uh, starting, it's like starting another lodge. You know what? We're, we'll have more, more time on our hands to go riding if we didn't have to do those things. So um, we just committed to going riding. And um, then a couple guys sold their bikes. You know, so there's still a few of us that go riding lots, uh, but it's not as um, regular and organized. And I think that's a real benefit to <clears throat> actually putting the effort in to start a club. So, Glenn and Matt, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, I agree that you know, getting, getting the club started up is, is difficult and keeping it sustained is difficult. but the flip side is once you have the club running and you are wearing the square and compass on your back, we do get comments everywhere we go. And, you know, the, the community will see us, you know, opening doors for people and seeing us donating to charities and riding in the Veterans Day Parade and being out in the community, which will get questions to those that don't know what masonry is. So um, I, I believe that's, that's one of the main positives about being in this riding club is, is it does get masonry out there to the community and see us doing good things. Yeah, Glenn, what were you going to say? And with the with the square and compass being on our vest, we fall under under the rule of God, uh, Grand Lodge. So if Grand Lodge says you can't do that, we can't do that. Um, so if we 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 cherish that square and compass on our back, and we don't ever want to lose it. So so in our bylaws, it states that we have to abide by the Washington State Masonic Code. So that 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 really helps us keep ourselves in check as well. Awesome. So you mentioned that you have to be a master Mason to join. Do you allow fellow craft and entrepreneurs to ride? 
they can ride with us. Um, anybody. Can we allow ride. anybody. We're yeah. open to anybody. They can they can ride into ride with us. They just cannot wear our 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 square and, our, our logo unless they are a master mason. And, and that, that letting just anyone ride with us. We've we've had forty some people go right over to Yakima for yep. um, for lunch. Yeah. And one of those group, the the president of a different club. Has now petitioned. He's an inner apprentice at our lodge. Um, he's going through masonry. He, he won't be a member of the club, but the, our whole goal isn't always join the join the club. Join the club. It's join masonry and get that brotherhood. Right. So that's one of the key factors we started. This was bring more light to masonry. Excellent. Awesome. And I'm sure that when you guys are out there in the public, um, you get the attention. Absolutely. Do. Do. That's a lot of fun. And we just got to get Matt Appel a bike, right? <laughs> I have a bike. You yep. just have to pedal it. <laughs> or, or or Matt Apple. We can get Matt Apple a bike too. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if that was a uh, Kawasaki joke there. <laughs> so, Glenn, I, I don't I don't mean to. Uh, I don't know if Paula can hear me or not, but it seemed like you got a little feeder information when you're trying to remember a name or something. And I know Paula's kind of probably we were hanging right there with you, and she's a she's an absolute she integral part. She has really really good hearing. Yeah, she's an, she's an integral part of the club, and I, I, don't, I mean, technically, she's probably a founding member just as well. I mean, she's definitely a founding family member, and so can you talk a little bit? We've got just a few more minutes here. Talk a little bit about the family side of things, and I know so, there's a family uh, so, element. So we, we really encourage our wives to be part of this, um, because without the support of our wives, like I said, we're, we're not going to be going to lodge all the time. We're not going to be doing the motorcycle clubs all the time. Um, I She's kind of the, the little angel voice on my shoulder that that helps me uh keep things in line and if we're at a meeting she she kind of nudges over to me hey get order get order so or stay back on point so because we are more of a social club so when we get our, our chapter meetings it's not a heavy big structure of like lodge we're more open free to talk um when we have a subject going along sometimes it does run long i know it's hard to believe that masons like to talk but <laughs> Um, we, we do try to have to stay on point once in a while. So either, either she'll nudge me or, or Matt will nudge me and say, Hey, we got to get this, get this going. Cause I like to talk to you and I, I have a hard time shutting up sometimes. Well, well from the, from the social family aspect too, you know, we, we do uh, a camp out or a camp out and a cookout each year, as well as we have an annual Christmas party each year, which is a really good time. You know, the entire family, kids, grandkids are all invited and it's, it's always a great turnout. And, um, you know, Glenn and I, we don't do drama. We don't like doing politics. This is all about hanging out with friends, having a good time, hanging out with family and not excluding anyone or anything and, and, and leaving the crazy world aside and just, you know, getting together, having a good time and riding. And so, that's one of the things I love most about this club. So do, uh, do I understand correct that your wives are allowed to be at your meetings? Yep. Yep. Okay, and, so and ride, and yeah, ride. And, yeah, and ride. But they, yeah, they, they, just, they don't get to wear the the uh, logo because they're not. They wear, a, they wear a family logo. So the the yeah. ladies' logo has two roses with some kind of uh, was it not Celtic, but it's, uh, tribal tribal uh, scrolling on the back of it, and it says some uh, sort of family member. Is Paula Very able to grab cool. her vest? Hey, Paula, can you grab your vest? Very cool. You kind of grab see it. Way to make them feel a part of it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's neat. It's really yeah. neat. So then Matt had mentioned, or somebody had mentioned earlier about all the work and, and of the club. Um, one thing that Matt, Matt brought to our lodge was the kind of the, the feel that we have of the club. We, we used to come to lodge. We'd get there as dinner started. We used to have lodge and take right off. Now we have a, we brought kind of the, the aspect of the, of the club to the to the lodge where we have a fellowship room. Now we all get there three hours before lodge. We hang out, we play pool, we play darts, we visit a lot, have a lot of fun. And they're they're, they're not all club members. Some are just brothers at the lodge, but it, it really brings that that uh, that um, brotherhood and fellowship back to us. Yeah. So Very this cool. is all his all his logo. Awesome. So yeah, our, our wives will wear those outfits or those vests if they want. <clears throat> I think that's a great way to be including them. 
Um, that's cool. awesome. We're, we're going to have to get more in segment two of this. <laughs> For sure. Well, hey, uh, let's. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, guys. Uh, at least this has uh, been a great evening, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, we'll maybe have you on for another another segment. How's that sound? Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. If we need to get up this summer, get a get a ride up to Canada, meet up. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be great. awesome. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on the Working Tools Podcast. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>